Welcome to The Apartment Guys, where we dive deep into all things multifamily investing. Our mission is to educate, inspire, and empower real estate investors to reach their highest potential. Each week, host Tate Seamer interviews high-level guests from all over the industry who are sure to bring valuable, actionable ideas that will propel your career to the next level. Whether you're just starting out or a seasoned investor, you are in the right place. And now your host, the apartment guy, Tate Seamer. Welcome everybody back to another episode of the Apartment Guys podcast coming at you and lucky today to have Mr. Phil Caprone. Phil, I'm probably saying your last name wrong because it, it was one of those things that I didn't clear with you before we started recording. So <laughs> how, how do I how do I say it right? Close enough. Different uh, different members of the family actually pronounce it different ways. So okay. the New York Caprons say it Caprons. that way with a strong K. Um, oh, the uh, New York father, Ohio mother of my version, they say Capron. They just try to make it non-regional and, you know, syllable, sure. phonetic, whatever. So Phil Capron, Phil Capron, Phil Caprone, <laughs> Caprone, <laughs> if you want to do that's where uh, I wanted to go. My my business value. partner and I were talking about you before we before we started, and that's where we wanted to go is to the the Phil Caprone. That's good I just stuff. did my my twenty three and me, no Italian, none, but none at all. Know, okay, yeah. all right, there you go. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds cool, so we can run with it. Perfect. Yeah. All right, well, Phil, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, for listeners, a little bit about uh, Phil. Phil learned that uh, real estate was the wealth builder for him after purchasing his first home in 2010 using a VA loan while on active duty. Now, this is huge. And and for veterans or for those of you that know veterans or have veterans in your family or friends, everybody needs to listen to this episode. Everybody that you know that has any sort of ties with veterans needs to know about this stuff. Um, We'll get into back into that in a second. But Phil cut his teeth in the business as a real estate agent and by flipping properties in coastal Virginia. That sounds familiar. I did a I did a lot of flipping and real estate agency work myself and definitely cut my teeth a few times doing it. (laughs) Um, But uh, 10 years and over 500 apartment units later, Phil's focus is, is in expanding real estate opportunities for military members and veterans. And he wrote his first book called Your VA Loan and How It Can Make You a Millionaire in 2019. And in 2021, created the first 100% veteran owned and operated fund backed by real estate called Mission First Capital, which of course you can find out, uh, you can find online just by Googling Mission First Capital. Um, But uh, Phil, welcome to the show, man. It's awesome to have you. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. I know this has been a long time coming, so it's nice to finally sync up. Yeah. Yeah. We've been working on this one for a while, get, getting you on the schedule and I had issues. You, you had an issue once I think. And so, yeah. but all good, here we are. So, so um, tell us a little bit about you um, from Virginia area. And it sounds like you saw the light on real estate early uh, when you bought your primary residence. And I think, you know, for those of us that are kind of wired in it with like an entrepreneurial spirit or whatever you want to call it, programming, if you will, sometimes those moments can be really profound. And even the even a even something that a lot of people do, which is buy a house, you got to buy a house with a VA loan. And we're going to talk about how unique and special that opportunity here is in, in, in a minute. But um, that that was was that kind of like your aha moment when you got to, to purchase that house with the VA loan? I, I wish it was, and maybe it was in some respect. Um, it's just tough. I was, I guess, 25 years old, 26 years old, something like that. And mm-hmm. I knew that I wanted a house that I could move my buddies into because we shared an apartment um, together after training. And it just, it made sense. I knew that real estate academically, um, you know, was a good thing to get involved in. And I love the idea of owning my own house. And turns out that these three guys paid my entire mortgage and then some the whole time Mm. we were there. 
Nice. And I'd love to say that I was really smart and that was the aha. And I took all the money I saved and bought more rental properties. But instead I bought toys and went to the bars and, you know, went on trips and stuff like that. But in your twenties, I guess that's, that's okay. Um, but Absolutely. If I, <laughs> but I, what I know today, I would have worked harder to find a way to get the next unit. Mm. I did save some money and uh, actually had a duplex under contract while I was still in the military, but it was when I was on my way out the door. So the lender, when they looked at my debt to income, um, they said, Hey, you're going to be leaving active duty service in the next six months or whatever it was. We can't approve this loan because we don't know if you'll get a new job. Mm -hmm. And it was a shame because the market, you know, in the 2010, 11, 12, era was pretty depressed. Um, yeah, nationally. Sure was. Yeah. I had this duplex under contract for 70,000 mm -hmm. and each side rented for, you know, 550 or something like that. And fast forward 10 years, it would sell for 270 mm -hmm. and each side rents for, you know, 1000 or 1100. I'm like, ah, mm -hmm. like what a missed opportunity. So I did the real estate agent thing for, you know, five years was flipping houses, flipped a few dozen houses. And, you know, I thought I was doing really well. Um, I bought a couple of rental properties, but it wasn't until 2017 when I bought a 13 unit complex and the rents just kept coming in month after month. That was the, you know, the light went off. Aha. So yeah. I now understand rich dad, poor dad and investing in duplexes, triplexes and quads, the millionaire real estate investor, all these books that I had digested between 2007 or eight and like 2017, it took a while for it to stick. And then, you know, receiving, I don't know, 10, 11,000 gross every month and depositing all my checks every, uh, every month at the actual bank location. Cause I thought it was cool to be like holding that much money. And obviously we know it's not cool. You don't want to be <laughs> handling checks. You just want it to drop into your cat. But at the time I just thought it was so cool and that was the aha. And I said, how can I do this again? Yeah. And from there, I went on to 108 unit and, you know, a few other JVs and syndications and racked up, you know, 500 and change um, by 2020. And now I'm actually in the phase that I'm, I'm exiting some positions. And obviously the market's been at our, the wind's been at our back for, for years. So um, I think we did a good job on all the ones I'm exiting, but uh, we're, we're sort of uh, standing to gain from that uh, tremendous, uh, wind at our back that we've had for the last, you know, however many years. So that's sure. where we're at today. Sure. Sure. So, and before we, before we back up into the VA loan, but uh, tell your, your exciting news about, uh, closing on a deal here at the end of the month that you're working on. Oh yeah. I, I don't want to jinx it, but, uh, we bought a hundred unit last year and, um, you know, actually, no, it's 2022 now. So technically this is 2020 that we purchased it, but we renovated about 60 of the units and, you know, uh, came up with some creative uh, areas to improve management and get some additional income. Um, big one was uh, a tech fee. We did like mm. a bulk cable and internet. So yeah. everyone would have it's cable and internet it's a great and one. had a nice arbitrage on the cost to the charge on that one. Um, you know, optimizing pet fees and, um, you know, insurance fees and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, we we're fortunate to raise the NOI by, I don't know, 100,000, 150,000, depending on which yardstick you want to use. And um, if all goes according to plan, we should net a little over 3 million for uh, my investors and partners by the end of the month here. So that's, uh, that's great. I mean, it's a big exit, it's a, you know, yeah. almost, uh, almost a two X. I think it'll be like one nine, one point nine X and nice uh, under two years. So it's, yeah, I mean, you, you can't hate that. And I, like I said, I think we did a really nice job with this, uh, this property, but just the market doing what it's doing sure helps as well. And could it be worth more in 10 years? Yeah, maybe, um, you know, inflation, uh, other forces at work, but I know we have a bird in the hand and it's a really good one. So we're going to, we're going to take it. So just to just to dig into that deal for a second, you raised the NOI by roughly a hundred thousand. You said, yeah, pro probably a hundred to one hundred and fifty. Just okay. So, on so let's say one hundred and fifty. Yeah, and and it's a it's roughly a hundred unit building community. Yes. So that's so that's uh, fifteen hundred um, a year per yeah. unit. 
which means you added um, 125. That's not right. 125 a, a month per unit. Yep. That's about right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So listeners, like, think of and and think about the way that you did it. You you did it with like just tightening up things like pet fees, probably month to month type fees, stuff like that. Um, but water the fees. That water the fees was another there you big go. One. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Uh, Almost always, there's almost always a water conservation program available of some kind, whether you're sub metering or installing low flow uh, toilets and shower heads or um, or just doing a utility bill back to just a straight flat bill back to the residents. There's almost always ways to recoup water and, you know, that can swing your NOI like a combination of those things can swing your NOI by six figures as Phil's shown here, and, you know, if it six, a six figure swing in NOI equates to a seven figure swing in value. Um, and what you're, what you're probably in about a five cap. Are you in Northern Virginia? Is that where you were? Or? So we're in coastal Virginia. So like coastal. Virginia beach, Norfolk, Chesapeake, Virginia. Yep. Yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's yeah. like seven small cities. So we're not like really on the map, but yeah. So, but it's probably what still, uh, you're still below selling below a six, I would think a six. Yeah. Cap. Below a six, below yeah. a six. So that that's an area in which the market has helped us. I think we bought at six and a half or maybe even six and three quarters. I think we negotiated a good deal on the front end and on the back end. I, I know that we're, <laughs> we're significantly compressed from where we started. Yeah. In and listeners, if you don't understand cap rates yet, don't worry about it. Um, set an appointment with me and we'll, we'll talk about it sometime. Um, or there's lots of ways to learn about it the cap rate equation and how, it, how it works with valuation and whatnot. And it's, it's, it sounds daunting until it's not. And then once you understand it, it's really pretty easy. So, um, set your mind at ease there. So, okay. So Phil, um, talk a little bit, let's, let's rewind and talk a little bit about how you strategically used your VA loan, um, along, uh, along the way. I wish I could, you know, tell you guys that I'm some great mastermind who knew all the stuff I didn't. It's just, you know, I sort of failed my way forward into this, into this thing. I knew that I wanted a house. I knew that I needed to be close to the base. I knew that I wanted it to be proximate to the beach. So I found a four bedroom, three and a half bath, five minutes from my driveway into the turnstile at my unit. That's pretty cool. Across the street from a beautiful beach. That's cool and in what we'd call the path of progress. So I didn't fully understand that. It just, it felt right. It felt like there was a lot of old houses, but then the, these new beautiful homes were springing up and that it, it just, it deserved to be a nicer community. And over the last 10 years, that's certainly happened. So I bought it, I, I thought I got a good deal. Maybe I could have gotten a little bit better of a deal, um, but it, it seemed to make sense. And then my mortgage payment We'll call it 1500 a month on a quarter million dollar purchase price um, and maybe 500 in utilities between water, electric, cable, all that. Um, I had three bedrooms to rent. So the in-law suite I rented for $800 and then the third and fourth bedrooms I rented for 600 each. So that's mm. 2000 into mm. my 2000 worth of expenses. And I was living in the master with, you know, the big walk-in closet and the jacuzzi tub and the tile shower or free. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is what you'd call a good deal. That's, and that's like, called a house hack guys right yeah, there. It's, it's a yeah. good house hack is what that is. Yeah. Yep. It's a good one. So you know, what's even better and what's crazy. And I had to eat so much crow with my girlfriend, um, you know, Airbnb mm -hmm. when it first sprang up, oh, yeah. I think I'm not alone as being like a real estate guy, an apartment guy that says that's not real estate investing. It's like a, you know, it's like a, a clown show, you know, it's not real estate, it's hospitality. So when my girlfriend and I moved out of that house and into our house, like across the street from the Atlantic ocean, um, she's like, I want to Airbnb this. I said, okay, if you want to do this, go ahead. So it was great to receive $2,000 a month and live there for free. But what's better is to Airbnb it and receive five or 6,000 a month on top mm -hmm. of my $1,500 mortgage. That's an absolute coup for what I owe on it, what I'm paying every month and what we're making. It's silly, That's um, gorgeous. but I was correct that it's Beautiful. a business. You yeah. know, I don't want the 2 a.m. phone calls. I don't want the police. I don't want 
all the stuff that kind of can come with the short-term rental market. Yeah. I don't want to deal with any of that, but she does. So we're a fantastic team and we're actually acquiring. Oh, you know, so you guys self-manage that, huh? Yeah, she manages it. She's oh, got wow. a, a nice little portfolio of her own. And Oh, good. Yeah, um, so well, just if it, a, a it, continuation it, on that same house that continues to just pay me every month. That's amazing. That is, yeah. that's so cool. And, and all of that was done with a VA loan. Talk about all the, the pluses of a VA loan aside from just the cost. I mean, it's essential. What, what, yeah. what was your interest rate on it? I mean, even back then, I'm sure it was I think, fantastic. I think back then, I mean, like 3.875, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, so it's really, really good. Yeah, it's, it's great. And what's a game changer for most service members is it's a zero down loan. And that doesn't mean you don't have to have any money. Um, a lot of people get that twisted and real estate agents and lenders, they'll say, oh, if you got $500 to put down for an earnest money deposit, you can use your VA loan and get a house. I think that's terrible advice. I think you need to have a certain level of financial literacy um, because when stuff happens, like one of the HVAC units goes down and it's $4,000, you have to be able to come up with that or you, know, you don't really have a house that's livable. The roof yeah. leaked, you know, um, yep. any list of, of things that can happen. So you, you have to have some money, but the beautiful thing is you don't necessarily have to put it up for a down payment. And as if that was not powerful enough, because a lot of people will say, well, Phil, you could also go FHA, low down payment, three and a half percent. And that's true. But with the FHA or some other state specific loan or, um, you know, conventional low down payment loan, you'll have what's called mortgage insurance, which is uh, an additional fee every month that is uh, insurance against you defaulting on your highly levered property. As a, a benefit of being a service member or veteran, the Department of Veterans Affairs is essentially co-signing with you for 20% of that loan, which in the eyes of the lender who's ultimately gonna buy it, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, whoever, it's an 80% loan. Because mm -hmm. the Department of Veterans Affairs, if you default, will step in for 20% of that value. So not having that mortgage insurance every month, it could be right. a couple hundred dollars in savings right. every month. Right. Yeah. Yeah. PMI is no joke, as, mm -hmm. uh, as many of you know. And and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at Veterans United right now, their, their site. And yeah, 0% down, no mortgage insurance. It equals lower monthly payments. Um, and well, little money out of pocket or no money out of pocket on the loan. But as Phil was saying, like, this isn't a situation you want to get into without any reserves in place, right? You want to have probably, I mean, to be smart, you probably want to have six months of reserves or, or three, you know, three to six months worth of reserves in place for expenses and, um, you know, just the ability to, like, like you said, Phil, cover a furnace if it goes out air conditioner, uh, dishwasher, just the little, little things that you need to take care of when it ha when they happen. It's life. And I, and I love that you said that, you know, I, I generally see if people pin me down on numbers, it's six months. You know, if you're a $1,500 payment, have 10 grand, that seems good to me. I, I can't think of too many things that wouldn't be insurance claim worthy. That would be much more than that, but it's just, yep. you know, it's peace of mind. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's so powerful as a wealth building yeah. vehicle, you yeah. know, in addition to the monthly income uh, or the savings, I should say, while I lived there and then I rented it out once I left, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's always, it's always been at least break even for me, but, you know, between, um, and I talk about this in my book, like the different forces of real estate that I love, perhaps my favorite is amortization. Mm -hmm. um, particularly when it's someone else that's doing the amortization for you. So what that means is um, a portion of your payment every month on a residential property with very limited exceptions is going to uh, be applied towards principal pay down. And at the start of the loan, it's very low and all your listeners know this, I'm sure, but you know, fast forward 10 years and all of a sudden I started out at 260 ish mm -hmm. um, uh, of a loan value because I baked in like, certain closing costs um, with the loan. And now I'm just at just above 200 mm -hmm. 10 years later. And, you know, the next door neighbor's house, which is identical, sold for 330. 
So if you just look at it from an annualized basis, made like twelve thousand dollars a year yeah. <laughs> just by holding onto this thing. And it's it's not quite that simple. You know, I've made some repairs along the way. Sure. But as long as your financial house is in order otherwise, like it's cool. If you rack up a few of these over the course of a military career, um, it can be very, very powerful um, when you separate or retire from service. And it doesn't just have to be a VA loan. So if anyone's still listening that isn't a veteran, and obviously I hope you are, you know, you can use this with your FHA loan that you get down to, you know, 20% equity position, and then you refinance the conventional, lose the mortgage insurance. Um, you know, you could buy it outright with a primary residence 20% down or as an investment property. And the force of real estate, they, they all work exactly the same. I just love the idea of the VA that people who otherwise might not be able to get a home are, you know, empowered and they can start their journey even very young. I mean, 25, 26, when I started, you know, that's young, but I see people that are doing it at 18, 19, 20. And I think, wow, that's super cool. By the time they're 30 or my age, you know, pushing 38, like they're going to be set if they just do yeah. this, you yeah. know, a few more times along their, along their way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of ways to financial freedom and, and independence and owning real estate outright that's paid for, that's cash flowing, uh, that's paying its, its expenses and then paying you handsomely at the end of the day uh, is a really, really good way to get there. And, you know, w- w- this is the apartment guys podcast and we talk about a larger scale apartment investing and we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that here in, in a bit, but it like a lot of people that know me well, and some of the listeners that, you know, have talked to me and, and met with me and whatnot will, will know that if I wasn't doing apartments, I'd be, I'd be doing an Airbnb model for sure. Like I, I'm a huge believer in the uh, the long term efficacy of those deals and and uh, of I, I love the idea of owning upscale, um, lu- almost luxury oriented property um, because of the type of hopefully the type of renter that you'll get there, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and that's there's never any guarantees there. But I'm just a big believer in 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 the Airbnb thing. And I think, you know, like you, you mentioned somebody that's 18, 19, 20 years old, put an air, put one Airbnb portfolio in your port property in your portfolio every year for the next 10 years. By the time you're 30, you'll have some sweet cash flow, and half your portfolio will be paid off or, or a third of it'll be paid off or whatever it ends up being. That's a good place to be. You can't argue with that. The world's changing, but everyone's always going to need apartments, which is why yeah. we love them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so apartments. So when did you, 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 you saw the light on your, you said it was a 14 unit, Uh 13. Yeah. 13 yeah. unit. And how did that one come into your life? So it's, it's pretty hilarious because I, I wasn't looking for it. I was still grinding as an agent and flipping, you know, dozen houses a year or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw this pop on the MLS and, uh, you know, a new friend of mine who's a, a contractor and had a nice rental portfolio of his own. And I said, this is, this is something for him because it's got a, you know, value added component. It's mm-hmm. a reasonable basis. It's a good area. And if I sell it to him, I'll make like $30,000. So that's great. And that was the, the most I could envision for how that deal was going to work out. So I took him over, we toured. And at the end of the day, it wasn't for him. And uh, so talking to the other agent, I, I just communicated, yeah, there's not really any, any interest. Um, you know, sorry. And he said, well, would your buyer be interested if it was owner financed? And I said, well, let me ask. And the answer was still no, uh, it just doesn't fit well with the rest of my portfolio. I'm going to, you know, work, I'm gonna spend my time elsewhere kind of deal. And I said, yeah, it's still a no. And, uh, the other agent said, well, do you know anyone that would buy it with owner financing? And I said, well, would he sell it to me? <laughs> He's like, sure, a hundred thousand down and he'll sell it to you. Nice. And that sounds like a really good arrangement, except for I didn't have a hundred thousand. Um, so I called my, uh, my buddy from my old unit who'd been my de facto hard money lender. 
um, ever since, you know, I got into real estate professionally. And uh, I said, hey, buddy, we're going to do this deal a little bit different. We're actually going to hang on to it. We're not going to sell it. And he said, yeah, cool. I'll send you the 100000 Just let me know when we're closing. Two weeks before closing, he called and said, you know what? I like our flips. I like keeping the money moving. I like, you know, the liquidity. If I decide to do something else, I don't want to do this rental deal. So what am I supposed to do? I put up $10,000 non-refundable of, yeah. you know, my money. And now, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to close. So the seller was a, an older gentleman, probably about 80. And so I went and uh, had coffee with him on his dock and just laid it all out. I said, sir, I'm very sorry. Uh, my partner, you know, he's out of state and he's decided that he doesn't want to do the deal. I'm obligated for the 10,000. It's yours if you want it. Um, I'm going to try to solve this. Um, but in the interim, I don't want you to be damaged because I'm not performing. Go ahead and, you know, remarket it and I'm going to do my best. And if we can still make the deal happen, I'd, I'd love to, but I, I totally understand if you have to sell it to someone else. And he said, what can you do young fella? And I had like, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30,000 in the bank. So I was supposed to say something like lower than that but I got scared. So I said, I, I could, I could bring 40. And he said, great. And he stuck out his paw and he said, we'll close next week as planned. And I said, ah, what have I done? <laughs> so, so then I get on the phone with, you know, some friends that know what I'm up to. I said, look, I, I can't make you a partner on this deal, but I need a loan. Like, can you give me 10,000? Give me 30,000? Give me any amount of money. Yeah. And a couple of them came through and I ended up raising the full 40. So I closed wow. on the deal. Nice. And after the closing costs and everything, I spent $5,074 and one cent of my own money to pick up a $900,000 asset. I had 40,000 of my friend's money, uh, 60,000 as a seller second with no interest for a year. And then the remainder, like 800 and change, was a seller first on a 30-year AM. Wow. With no credit check, no you know, appraisals, no environmentals, no anything. Because frankly, at that point, I didn't realize that I was supposed to have all that stuff. Um, so I'm happy to report that in the first year, I was able to pay off my buddies, right? So knock that out. Then I worked to pay off the seller second. And then uh, we just sold the property a couple months ago, and I think I made 215 mm. all in. So nice. that's a little bit of a fudged number because I used cash flow to pay those loans off. You know, so it's right. just, it's, but anyway, I put 215 in my pocket. I'll say, yeah. that. and yeah, with yeah. 5,074 dollars and one cent to start in 2017, like I feel like that's a pretty good result for most people. And yeah. what was even more valuable is again, me standing at the bank, like filling out like a deposit slip with all these money orders and checks thinking I'm like Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> like I thought <laughs> I was like the coolest cat on the block. And obviously no, now that's ridiculous. But it was that that sort of, you know, led me to believe I should do this, but like 10 times bigger. Mm -hmm. How many more of these could I get? And then yeah. could I have someone do a lot of this stuff for me? And yeah, that sort of was the evolution to today. Yeah, that's, that's such a great story. <laughs> I was kind of on the edge of my seat there. Like, how's he going to get this done? Yeah. Gonna, it was... I, and, and I mean, those of us that have done deals and have raised private capital for deals, whether it's 10,000 or, or 10 million know that feeling like all of a sudden it's like game on and you, you have to, you have to figure it out. Like the, the option for failure just isn't there. Right. Like I have a personal motto where there's a fill, there's a way or something. <laughs> and I spend something. most of my time in or something land. <laughs> I just get myself into these spots and then I have to figure it out because there's not really an alternative. So <laughs> it probably led to a few more of these gray hairs than I deserve at my age. But anyway, it keeps it, it keeps it interesting. Yeah. I've, I've, op one of my mantras is, uh, is, or one of my business mantras has been ready, ready, fire, aim, fire, aim. Love it. Yeah. And, totally. and I, I can't say that that's, 
you know, it's definitely produced gray hairs. Like you said, um, I I've got gray too. And, and, uh, and there's definitely moments when, when you work in that realm, um, that feel a little bit like you're flying by the skin of your pants, but seat of your pants. But, um, at the same time, it's like how it's how you get stuff done in this world. And, and sometimes in, you know, in this apartment world, for instance, it, this game requires putting something under contract, uh, that you may not necessarily have all the pieces to get put together for, to close on in like, say next week, but you know that you've got 60 days due diligence or 30 or 45 day, days due diligence. And then you've got another 30 days to close. Like, you know, with that amount of runway that, or at least you, you, you calculate that I think I can get it done in that amount of time. And then it's like game on and you're, it, you know, it's all hands on deck and you're raising capital and doing all the things that it takes to get deals closed. That's so, absolutely right. And the, yeah. the folks that are listening to this, I'm sure, you know, most are action takers, but the ones yep. who maybe haven't um, done the deal yet, that's okay. Um, yep. You just need to take the, the next logical step towards getting you there. And there's going to be an uncomfortable period um, in, in situations in which you don't have all the answers. And there's probably a little bit of a balancing act between total reckless abandon um, and, you know, just being a little bit uncomfortable, um, but taking action. I mean, that is, if you're just the type of person that takes action, you're a lot more primed for success in any arena, but this real estate game, I'd say, uh, uh, you know, more so. Yeah. And if you're, if you're listening to this podcast right now, you're surrounded by people that can help you get deals done. If you, if you again, back to the hypothetical, finding a deal that you don't necessarily know how you're going to close, or you don't know where all the capital is coming from or where the loan's coming from or how it's all going to get put together. You know, that's the time for you to partner up. And that's the time for it, teamwork. And that that's what really makes the world go around in this space. Like there's very, very few people that do this space solo at, at, you know, at all. Um, almost everybody partners up And these days, you know, like green light equity group, my company will partner with, um, different capital groups, uh, capital raiser type groups on deals. And we have opportunities for, for people like that, um, coming up as a matter of fact right now. So, you know, it's, you know, you, you have more, like you likely have more resources around you than you realize if you're a listener and, and you're thinking like this feels kind of daunting still to do a bigger scale deal. Really the only limitations as cliche as it might sound, the only limitations here are, are what you have be, the limitations between your, your ears. And yeah. Yeah. So I, the, uh, uh, somebody said something about like the most important real estate to every that you ever develop is the real estate between your ears or something. Oh, I lines. love that. I'm yeah. stealing that. <laughs> That's a good one. That's so good. <laughs> Got to develop that real estate. So, um, so cool. So tell us a little bit about mission first and mission first capital and what, what you've been able to do with that. Great. So yeah, mission first capital, um, sort of came to be, uh, because having 500 ish units across a handful of JVs and a couple of full fledged syndications, it's a lot. <laughs> there's property managers here, there's partners there, there's different sets of accountants. Mm -hmm. And it's like, my goodness, could I just streamline this? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I was thinking on it and fell back to, you know, who do I want to help in this world? And, uh, you know, anyone who's on active duty or has worn our uniform for any period of time, I believe that you're amongst the best we have here in this country. Because at one time, you signed on the dotted line for an amount up to and including your own life. Mm -hmm. And sadly, last 20 years, a lot of checks got cashed. But the ones of us that are still here and just to not get it twisted, I didn't see combat or like do anything like heroic or anything. But 
you know, I know a lot of people who have, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I want them to have every opportunity when they come back from doing a very, very difficult taxing, thankless in many time, many instances job to build a life that's, you know, uh, worthy of them and their family and the sacrifices that they've made. Yeah. So um, I thought about sort of what I didn't have when I got started. And with the 13 unit, I figured it out. With the 108 unit I did next, I really had no clue. And the answer was, if I could create a one-stop shop for veteran real estate entrepreneurs to come to get equity, senior debt sponsorship, um, in origination, net worth guarantorship, legal, accounting, investor relations, um, you know, property management, construction management, best practices, like war stories, horror stories, insurance, like all of it in one, one place. They bring a deal, we'll underwrite it if it, you know, sort of meets our, our, uh, our box, our criteria, we'll JV with them and try to be the one-stop shop for all those things so they can go work on building their portfolio and building their expertise in their little corner of the world, whether it's apartment, storage, Airbnb, um, you know, we're open to looking at quite a, quite a few different things. Right now, it's just apartments and uh, one self-storage is kind of on the hook. We'll see if that, that goes through. Um, but, uh, you know, I know that the opportunities out there are diverse as veterans themselves. So, you know, we'll pour gasoline on their fire so they can grow and scale way faster and way beyond what I've been able to do in, you know, their markets. And then also they'll be able to pour into their families and pour into their communities. Because like I said, I believe they're on the whole pretty good people. And if you bring us a deal and I don't think you're a good person, well, hey, probably not going to do a deal together. Um, right, right. But on the whole, I think they are. And then more than that, you know, you don't have to be a veteran to invest with us. But the hope is that we can show people the first domino they need to knock over you know, on a chain reaction that's going to lead them to a different financial outcome mm. than if they had just gone and worked a regular W-2 job, whether it's the military or otherwise, um, for 20, 30, 40 years. We want mm. to start growing, um, you know, the passive wealth accum accumulation side of things and, and open their eyes to new opportunities. And Mission First Capital is not supposed to be, you know, the hundred percent of someone's portfolio allocation, but if we can help you get involved in private equity, uh, you know, deals exposure through our fund and a few different things, and you'll get to see them all on, you know, Facebook and the email reports and all that, maybe something rings a bell and you want to go and pursue that directly, or maybe you just want to set a little money aside every year and, uh, you know, ride shotgun with us and, uh, be invested in, 100% veteran owned and operated company and 100% veteran owned and operated real estate opportunities with mm -hmm. other great veterans. And um, yeah, so that's sort of it in a nutshell. Does that make sense? Or yeah, just totally. Like, it's, it's amazing. Cool. It's amazing what you're doing. So what, who do you find? Is it mostly active duty uh, folks that you find are investing with you or is, is it veterans it as well or? It is, which is surprising because a lot of active duty folks don't get paid that much. And mm -hmm. that's another reason why, you know, I started Mission First Capital is it bugged me on all my JVs and syndications that, you know, very uh, low percentage of my investors were veterans because they weren't accredited. So I needed to find a vehicle that I could include everyone and for, you know, a relatively low amount of money for a minimum investment. So instead of 50,000 or a hundred thousand, we're starting at five. Oh, wow. So yeah, you know, 5,000. So Very it's cool. accessible to more people, not everyone. I get it, but yeah. a lot more people. Um, yeah. And we're finding a lot of active duty. I think the reason why is that the word is getting out. Um, there's a couple of like uh, great veterans groups. There's active duty, passive income. There's from military to millionaire. And they're on, you know, the, uh, real estate education front primarily they've got podcasts and all the good stuff mm -hmm. um, so they're helping people build their own real estate portfolios but the word's getting out that you need to do something other than just have a job because mm -hmm. at a certain point 
the military career ends or the next career ends. And it sure would be nice to have something taken care of you other than the next job you can get. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing like passive cash, residual cash flow, right? Or passive cash flow that's coming from a real estate investment. And what Phil's doing here is he's giving people about as low a barrier of entry as you can get into really nice return type projects. And without getting into specifics on on metrics and and whatnot, these t- these a typical apartment and syndication or or even a JV is going to be, you know, in the in the mid teens to high teens internal rate of return, something like that, and um, uh, you know sometimes better. And so that's really exciting. Um, and and I, I guess Phil, for what what kind of create a vision here for somebody that, you know, is, is in the, maybe in the middle of their career is maybe six, eight, 10 years into a military career, um, has, has some, uh, you know, I guess extra income to invest or wants to invest has, has maybe a little nest egg they want to invest. Um, how, how would they go about working with you on, with that? So it's, it's fairly simple, um, you know, and obviously we're not going to get into specifics. Like that's not the purpose of this podcast. Sure. Um, but if, if anything I said resonated, you want to learn, learn a little bit more about us and what we're uh, up to missionfirstcapital.com. Very simply, um, you know, there's some media, some, you know, stuff about me, podcasts, uh, blogs. And then if you want to check out any of our current investor offerings, they would, would be available there. Mm-hmm. Cool. So there you go, guys. You can go right there and and see the type of properties that uh, that Phil and his group are investing in and working on, and learn more about Phil there. That that's the best way for listeners to reach you is through the website missionfirstcapital.com. Yeah, I'd say it's just mm-hmm. um, you know normally I'd just say hey uh, Facebook me or whatever, but it's just yeah. you know Facebook and Instagram. It's so tough just to yeah. wade through all the stuff these days. I, I'm not spending a ton of time there. So, you know, if you're on the website, there's all the investment stuff, but there's also uh, a couple of emails and in ways that you can get a hold of the team. And, you know, if um, if you'd like to to get together, you know, personally, like Zoom call or something like that, um, shoot my team a message. And, and I'm always happy to get together with people. It's just uh, lately time has been a little a little tough. Um, yeah. But if it's you know, if you feel like I could provide value to you, please do so and uh, do my best to get on the calendar as soon as possible. Yeah. And listeners think, I mean, really seriously, take a second and think about who, you know, that needs to hear this episode, like the, the veterans in your life, the active duties in your life. uh, Those guys and gals have done an amazing service for us uh, as citizens of this country. And, and, uh, as Phil, you said it way better than me, of the, you know, have signed up really for uh, the ultimate cost at the, at the end of the day, unfortunately, for for some of them. And they deserve every benefit that and every advantage in society, in my opinion, that that we can uh, that that we can get them. And and this VA loan program is no joke. Like it is legitimately like the best thing going like nobody else out there ha- like, has access to a-, a loan program like this and you know you can combine it with your house hacking strategy that Phil did so well get a 0% down loan on a on a property that you can rent out part of and live in part of and boom there you go you're off and running you got a portfolio piece you got a rental in your portfolio and and you're you're off and running but then also um, you know, what Phil has to offer veterans with mission first capital as well. And the avenues of investing that are, are there, uh, it's a tremendous service to our veterans. So Phil, thank you, man. Um, I, re- I should have, uh, right out of the gate, just right out of the gets should have thanked you for your service and for all the ways that you've supported our service our service members and our service team, um, our force armed forces. So I really appreciate you. And 
Do you have anything that you'd like to leave the listeners with on the way out here? Thanks. Thanks for saying that. And, uh, you know, it was, was really an honor. And like I said, um, my military career quote really didn't, I didn't really do much. Frankly, it wasn't great at my job. Um, you know, I was in the special ops in the Navy and, you know, I Mm. had like these aspirations to go and like really make a difference. And it just, sometimes despite your best intentions, you're just, you're not in the right seat on the bus. Yeah. And, you know, so everything for me in that world was hard. And I was around all these guys that were making it look easy and, you know, were yeah. kicking ass and taking names. And, you know, so I've, I've sort of made it my life's mission um, because I wasn't in the right seat there was to try to be in the right seat here mm. and to affect change and, um, and to help those people that I do believe deserve a lot. But thank yeah. you for, for saying that. I don't, you know, all veterans, I think, have a little bit of a, a weird, weird reaction to that, right? Because right. you know, everyone signed up for their own reason, and sure, you know, um, it, no, nobody did it, did it like with a gun to their head. But no, right. it is nice that to have patriotic Americans that like actually kind of get it. So thank you, like really mm-hmm. thank you. I just um, personally, and I know a lot of people like me would just kind of like, ah, oh, well, you know, we don't really deserve it, but it, mm-hmm. it's it's just it's it's kind of I don't know, sort of complicated, but you, you I really appreciate des- you. You do it. deserve it, and I mean that uh, sincerely. Thank no you. matter no matter what you you think, Phil. Um, I yeah. So oh, there was something you were, you said that I was gonna I was gonna piggyback on, but go ahead. Did you have anything? Any last <laughs> thoughts for the for the listeners there? I mean, this is this has been fun, and yeah. and look, if you're on this podcast, you're on the right track. You know, your network is your net worth, yeah. and when things really started changing for me is when I realized that there's this ecosystem out there of guys like you and, you know, events to go to and podcasts to listen to and books to read and actually got off my, my butt and took some action. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have all the steps, but I, I found who I thought were people that could help me along the way and just went for it because I, had some clarity on what I wanted. And if you're listening to this, I know you do have some clarity. So get out there and take action. That's, that's, yeah. that's the key in my opinion. Yeah. And that's coming from uh, that's coming from a veteran of our armed forces. So we better take that seriously for sure and get out there and, and make them proud. So um, Phil, thanks a ton for being on the show. It was a pleasure to have you and to get to learn from you and uh, get inspired by all your success. And um, I look forward to seeing what you and Mission First Capital do in the future and all the veterans you, whose lives you enhance and bless along the way. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. It's been, uh, it's been a real pleasure. You betcha. Listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of The Apartment Guys, and we will check you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to The Apartment Guys with Tate Seamer. Tate and friends are grateful to have you as a loyal listener. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe, rate, review, and share with friends on your Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or any other podcast platform. Also, check out Tate's YouTube channel for videos of many of these episodes and more. Until next time, take massive action steps and rock on.